is, and there's a poshness thing going on. But what I do have to say is don't, don't make assumptions, everybody. Don't make assumptions. Because I grew up on a rundown estate. I did. I did. It was my father's estate. It's been in the family for generations, you know. Run down, you should have seen the tennis courts. They were appalling. I didn't play a decent game for years. Cry for me later. That's fine. So we're all right, Chelmsford! Yeah! yeah. This is lovely to be This is very nice. It's very nice indeed, yes. But, uh, but I, I always feel like I have to explain my voice because people can get quite angry about it. I know that sounds ridiculous, but people can because... Well, the, the truth behind my voice, I'm going to explain myself here, is that uh, I didn't grow up in Britain. That was basically it. Basically what happened... I know, it sounds bad, doesn't it? When I was seven, uh, my family moved abroad and I followed them a few months later when I figured out where they'd gone. You see. <laughs> and you know what the British are like when they go abroad? They, we get a lot more British, don't we? Don't you think? Don't we get a lot more British? The British. Don't we get a lot more British? So there I was, eight years old, smoking a pipe, wearing a cravat, backhanding the natives. And, and it just continued from there. I started pretending the age of about seven or eight to be incredibly posh, and I've never shaken it off. Uh, people do say you must have had elocution lessons or something. And, uh, I, kind, I kind of did, to be honest. They were informal elocution lessons with a, a favourite teacher of mine, and he like Aiden's dad, was jowl-shakingly posh. He was really like, rah, 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 you know, really, like, ridiculously posh. Rah, 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 rah. I'm coming to my study, don't tell your parents. <laughs> and he was the one, I suppose, that uh, really taught me how to speak with plums in my mouth. <laughs> yeah. He called it elocution. You might know it as teabagging, man. I don't know. I don't know. It's It's So, uh, uh, I live with my mum. That's right, winner. Who else lives with their mum? No one. Oh, what are you people? <laughs> you do, and you're proud. Yes. Good. Is this... Yes. No, my mum. She's not here, so I can say what I like. Great. <laughs> God. What that? No, decent because... Uh, a recession so oh, she choice. Strictly she lives with me. Oh, she lives with you? Yeah. Can you just not get rid of her? Did she move in? Uh, she cooks dinner. She cooks... Well, it's not bad, is it? It's not bad. Although, you wouldn't... You don't choose to, do you? Because I, the only reason I do is I lost my job and I ran out of money and I couldn't move in with my boyfriend because he doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> Which is just selfish. It's just selfish. What a fucker. Same excuse on Valentine's as well. A dicker. Does your mum... Uh, right, my... <laughs> my mum... Sorry, I'm just going to get into a conversation about mum's it. Recently, my mum comes to some of my gigs, went up, and uh, she doesn't like me talking about sex, because she's like... Oh, that, oh, that, oh, that, that, oh, that, that's because she's deaf, you see. <laughs> No, she's not. No, no, she's not. No, that's her voice for making... Does your mum do anything like that? It's her discretion voice when she's talking about dodgy things. Yeah, and it's all... You can literally be in your living room. There's no one else there. It's just the dog and she's still kind of going, Ooh, I'm in there. Why are you doing the hand movement? You're making it a lot worse. It doesn't make it any better. Does it, she, I mean, it gets a lot worse. I don't, I, I don't know if your mum's like this. Maybe she's not as much of a gossip. Is she a massive gossip? Not a big mouth. Oh, my mum, my to get more discreet when we're in public, just, she gets even louder. She does the voice, but she gets louder. Like we're, we were in a Starbucks and it was packed and there were a couple of people on the table next to us. And she was talking about these women that moved in next door and she was going, I don't think they're spinsters, Lindsay. I think they're... <laughs> She was doing. She was doing. She was like, "What? Oh, what? Shut up, shut up, people listening." She's like, "What? Oh, what? Oh, not like saying it. Oh, political correctness gone mad, is it? I can't say." I was like, "Shut up!" And she kept going. She's very childish, so she was like, "I was like, "Shut up!" And she's going, "I was like, "Shut up!" You can tell the people next to us. We're in Surrey, very middle class. They're going, "Oh my God." It's a homophobic attack by a deaf person. <laughs> Shut up! You can tell they had a dilemma. It's a fight between a lesbian and a deaf person. Whose side are we allowed to be on? <laughs> oh, it's like top trumps or something, isn't it? Oh. 
Do you have loads of stuff around the place uh, from your childhood? I don't. Yeah, quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. Do you have loads of stuff around the place from your childhood? Yeah, quite a bit. Yeah. Do, do you regress a bit? Do you get a bit childish when you're with your mum? I'm childish. I, I can't imagine. I'm sure. Is that a hat made out of hair? <laughs> No. Oh, it looks like you've made your hat out of clippings of your hair. <laughs> you can actually make sweaters out of dog. Anyway, that's going completely off the subject. <laughs> now, because I've got, uh, like, my mum is really, really trying to be proud of me. And, like, on the mantelpiece, there's a picture of me in the brownies, <laughs> which is really sad. I was in the brownies for about a month. Oh, were you a brownie, madam? Little chair. Woohoo! I bet you were covered in badges, weren't you? Uh, I was there, and I moved over, you're allowed to go into scouts. Yeah. Early sex training, <laughs> and then back again. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. The scouts, you got to do some set fire to things then. You're, you're young, did you say younger than me? <laughs> Making assumptions. <laughs> yes, I know. Yes, you're, <laughs> you're clearly younger than me. <laughs> you can lose that. It's, no, no, you are. Let's not just lie about this. If, uh, for the people who can't see her, she's about 45. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, 43, actually. No, 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 she's not, oh, she's not good. Yes, yes, you are young. I'm actually thrown by that. That's terrible. You know why? It's because I've hit 30. And now I'm thrown by someone saying, you look your age. <laughs> it's fine, I'll forget. Did you have the different, did you wear the trousers then? Because I had the dress, that's how, uh, how long ago I did the brownies. No, I was brownies, just getting into a conversation with her. Oh, wait, well, I thought it was all trousers. It was very old fashioned when I did it because I only got one badge, and do you know what that badge was for? <laughs> Hoovering. <laughs> seriously, seriously, Hoovering. Hoovering. What, you got that badge? I did, I demonstrated and everything. You can marry me now, I'm wife material. <laughs> Stay, don't leave. The next badge is for hostessing. <laughs> hostessing? What the fuck is that? Is that like how to make the perfect gin martini for your future husband when he walks in the door from work? <laughs> <laughs> Too much gin in that, little Lindsay. Too much gin. <laughs> leave that for your third badge. How to abort your unwanted fetus. <laughs> That's what they like, isn't it? It's shocking. They say girls, they make them into women. <sighs> Do you have toys? Do you old toys at home? You don't? Uh, I don't either, but they, they still, they speak to you if they're in the loft. <laughs> so you should find. Do you, can you not hear their scratchy little voices at night? Going, I'm going to climb up the bedclothes and suck out your face. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> Who here, let's do a bit of observational comedy. Who here used to torture their toys? <laughs> Observational comedy people. You did! I still do. <laughs> Are the toys, the nature of the toys changed, sir? Torture sex toys, I'm thinking. You used to, Star Wars, so how did you talk to them? Did you shut them up your bottom? <laughs> <laughs> it's just a fantasy, I hope. Have you been watching? <laughs> well, you do have a lot of YouTube clips up, sir. <laughs> 10,000 hits! <laughs> this is getting weird! Oh, I feel like I know you guys a bit too well, actually. <laughs> but you used to, no one else! Maybe torture's a bit strong. Did you used to punish your toys? <laughs> no? So no one else got used to the smell of burning fur? <laughs> no? No one else had a little police, I, a little police behind the sofa? It was like, I called it the Deep Dark Dungeon. It was a re-education and punishment centre for naughty toys. <laughs> Observational comedy. No, no, okay, that's fine, you're all freaks. And really, that's, I, I, you know what? When I first started thinking of this, I thought, everyone's gonna agree with this. It can't be me, I wasn't like a little Kim Jong-il or something. <laughs> Did anyone not name their toys because to name them was to give them power? <laughs> Just me again, unbelievable! I didn't name any of my toys. I had a pink panther called Pink Panther. I had a cabbage patch doll called Cabbage Patch doll. I had a teddy bear with red fur, red teddy, and there was yellow teddy, grey teddy, blue teddy, dissident teddy. He was just a head in a box eventually. <laughs> <laughs> My only friend was Gaddafi Dark. Where is he now? No one knows. He's in my shed. Up here. Up here. <laughs> so, uh, we've all bonded, so that's good. <laughs> so, uh, yes, who, who here is unemployed? Good! <laughs> yes, uh, I feel like a winner tonight. It's me and you guys. We're like this. 
Right, that is uh, English degree. Who said they had an English degree? English degree. Yes. Uh, but you, who, who's been long term unemployed? Anyone who's been a long time unemployed at all? No one? Okay. I've been unemployed for way too long, and you end up sort of trying to find things to do that don't cost any money in anything, and you know, what the hell, what are there any suggestions about masturbation? I think with my mum, the dog watches, it's really uncomfortable. So basically, I started going to church with my mum, just for entertainment purposes. I know that's a bit weird. I know, I know it's a bit weird. It's alright though, it's okay. Average age there about 120, so I feel really young. I do, I feel really young. Which is really important. Although everyone there's been ill, it's like some kind of competitive illness, which is something else that mums do, isn't it? Don't you think? Like, you've got a headache, I've got a brain tumor. <laughs> Every week you go there and someone's, generally, they really up the stakes. Everyone there has apparently had cancer. I don't know. It's like the whole church has been built on a nuclear waste ground or something. It's really weird. I mean, there's, everyone there has had some kind of operation as well. They've had bits cut off and everything. Because uh, there's a congregation of about 17 and I think between them they've got two boobs and a bollock left. <laughs> and that's just the big <laughs> It's weird. No, no, but it's, it's, and, and, and the, the vicar tries to kind of work the illness of the week into the prayers as well, obviously doesn't know how to do it, because there is an old chap who had testicular, he had a testicle off basically, so, and, and so, and the, uh, I might be paraphrasing here, but the vicar said basically, oh, let's pray for Fred, or Bob, or whatever his name is, let's pray for him, and let us hope that one day, one day, he was really struggling, he was thinking, how do you put testicle into a prayer, and he went, and one day, let's hope that Bob will be whole again, I was like, one, that's an atomic kitten reference. It's uh, not very religious. And two, he's going to get his bollocks back. That's what he's saying. How good is that? A new theological point. You get your bits and pieces back. Anything you've lost in life, you get it back in heaven. Don't you think that's great? I think that, I thought that was great. I was sitting there going, I didn't know what that. There's a box, a lost property box in heaven full of left scrotum waiting for owners to reclaim them. How good is that? Don't you think that's good? You get everything back! Do you think you get your hymen back? <laughs> That'd be an emotional reunion, wouldn't it? No, maybe not. Well, they, you know the suicide bombers, you think they're going to go up to heaven and get 72 virgins? I bet they don't get the virgins. I bet instead they get a big bag of hymens. <laughs> big bag of hymens. Counted out 72 of them. Might be foreskin, hard to tell when they dry out. There you go. Should have thought about that, shouldn't you? I'm miming a bag of hymens. My life is really strange. <laughs> I, I love I love it, though. I love the idea that you get things back. Although it does mean that all the nails that you've ever cut off, you get them back as well, and so you can presumably you look like Wolverine when you go up to heaven. How cool is that? Do you think that's cool? I think that's cool. And all the hair that you've ever cut off or anything like that, or shaved or anything. So you go up to heaven, men with huge beards, and women with huge beards. <laughs> My flies are undone. <sighs> Wow, it's good to notice your flies are undone on the stage. <laughs> I mean, that's what the nails are for as well. A bit of topiary, a bit of, bit of a jazz and everything. Do, do, do. No, you're just thinking about my flies now, aren't you? <laughs> yes, right, so uh, I'm, I'm probably going to leave you now. Uh, you've been lovely, by the way. Oh, so, uh, I'll tell you, I'm going to tell you the only joke I have about the difference between the sexes, because uh, I think you're ready for it. Uh, basically, you know, it's like a comedy staple, isn't it? All oh, the difference between men and women. So I was trying to come up with one, and, and I asked a male friend of mine what he thinks of the differences, and he was like, oh, men have a penis? And I was like, it's not very helpful. And he was like, Ugh. and he said, having a penis is like being attached to a maniac. Is that right, Chips? That's good. Just got confirmation there. So I was like, right, I'm going to come up with a female equivalent. So I was like, right, having a... <laughs> Turning into my mother. Uh, having a... God. It's a bit like being attached to Angelina Jolie. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to generalise here, but some chaps absolutely hate that joke. They do 
Uh, I, I had a chat. I, there was a bloke in the, in, in the front row of a gig, and, it, and I did that joke. And he looked at me like I was the most repulsive thing in the world. Can you believe it? And I actually said to him, well, you didn't like it, did you? And he was like, no, I found it demeaning to women. <laughs> So I hit him, actually. I hit him. I hit him. Yeah. With a ping pong ball, I hit him. <laughs> My act used to be a bit different. That's how I deal with hecklers, so well done. <laughs> right, well, I have a lovely night. Uh, it'd be lovely to talk to you. I feel like we've gotten to know each other wonderfully well. Thanks very much. I've been in Good night.